two. Hello there and good morning, Pastor Don Heyman, coming to you from a place that I'm really wishing you were. We are in Athens, Greece at Crossroads United Pentecostal Church. We're in downtown Athens. We are very close to the Parthenon, the Acropolis. We're very close to the most significant uh, structures in all of ancient history of mankind. It's an amazing city, a beautiful city, and a very multicultural city. We are blessed to be here with my family and CAC. We greet you, we miss you very much, and we look forward to being home, God willing, next weekend. But for this morning, I have a little treat for you. I'd like to introduce to you a wonderful veteran of the gospel. This uh, precious man of God has been ministering the gospel for many decades, and he comes from the state of Louisiana. God called him at a tender age, and he began evangelizing, but that wasn't God's intention for the long term. God called him to be a missionary, and the missions have been here in Greece that he has performed. His vision has been cast far and wide in this city and beyond multiple cities throughout this region and this country. Really blessed to know Brother Sim Strickland. By the Lord's grace, he'll be with us later in the year. He and his wife will be our guests at CAC. But this morning, I felt like it would be a blessing to you to hear from him. And we might do a little bit of an interview here. But the bottom line is this. When Brother Strickland reads the Bible, especially the New Testament, he reads it and he can actually go to the Greek text in the, origin, the original writing of the authors that were written under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And when he reads the text, he can see not just a dictionary or a lexicon understanding, which is rather clinical and sterile, but he can see and understand the text from the standpoint of someone who is living that very language. Brother Strickland, I've said plenty. This right here is Brother Sim Strickland, wonderful missionary to Greece. I just asked him to share a word with you and I and uh, the congregation this morning at CAC so you could get acquainted, hear a little bit of his wisdom. God bless you, sir. So good to be with you. Thank you, Brother Heyman. It's been such a, a blessing traveling with uh, your pastor and uh, just sharing the word of God. He, he just He's just overflowing with knowledge and uh, uh, it, it's been really inspiring to me. And so we got to sharing some things, and he said, man, I wish you could uh, share that with uh, our folks back home. That's right. And so I'm just going to take a little stab at something here this uh, morning to uh, uh, share some enlightenment Great. that might be a blessing to you. If you will uh, read in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Now, I, I want you to notice in that verse, the word power is used twice. <laughs> uh, however, in the Greek language, it's not the same word both times. Uh, in the first instance, it's where it speaks about the exceeding greatness of his power to us, it's talking about the dynami, or as the Westerns could say, dunamis. It's talking about a force. It's talking about... The, the gifts of God and the act and the, uh, the the ministry of the Holy Spirit and casting out devils and all these uh, forces that are in the in, in the visible in the, in the vis, invisible yes. dimensions of God's kingdom uh, are working in the church and uh, to us were who believe. But he goes on and qualifies it, and he says, according to, which is just like in harmony with, or according to mm -hmm. the working of his mighty power. Now, the word power there is not dunamis or dinami. The word there is kratos, which means according to his government or his realm, wow. his dominion. And so the first time I read that in the Greek, uh, I, I said, wait, that's the wrong word. That <laughs> word don't belong there. Kratos don't belong there. When we when we hear the word kratos, we think of taxes. We think of law enforcement. We think of going to the courthouse. It's because it's the it's the the kingdom. It's the operation and administration of the kingdom. Oh my goodness! And so he's saying, I give you all these powers. I give you all these forces. 
Not for you to use unilaterally and go off and think you're somebody, but I give them to you to work in harmony with my kingdom and my authorities Praise and my God. power. And uh, so when you start uh, uh, looking in, into the Greek uh, words, it automatically gives you, a little, I think, a little broader view of things because of the... Uh, uh, the life that we live among the Greek people and uh, hearing the Greek people, the preachers preach mm -hmm. and having discussions with them. So it, it automatically kind of just jumps out. And in that case, it's such, a, it's such a, a, a changing effect. It really opened my eyes to the fact that, you know, it's, it's, there's no neutrality. You're either in or you're out. There's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness. There's the kingdom of light. It's the kingdom of Satan. It's the kingdom of God. And we have to be in harmony and under the umbrella of God's kingdom. Uh, you know, people are going to come to the end and he's going to say, did we not do these things in your name? Did we not cast out devils? And he said, I never knew you. They had forces. They had powers. But they did not work in harmony with God's kingdom and God's realm. So the, the, the pastor and I preached to our church an awesome message on submission. And, and that's the key word. That is the key word. Uh, the old timers, uh, I remember them saying, you know, the key thing is trust and obey. Trust and obey. And so uh, uh, I, I hope that's been a little blessing to you this morning. And we could go on and on, but I don't know how much time we that's should take so here today. But think about that when you read Ephesians and study it a little bit and realize that, uh, that uh, we have to be connected together with God's kingdom, with God's ministry, with God's people. And uh, you think about the kingdom of God, it starts at the throne. And, it, you know, you've got the beasts, the seraphims, and the cherubims. The beasts crying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. You got the archangels, and you got legions of angels, and you got the twenty-four elders. You just oh, and just and, and it just just comes on down and integrates with the visible church, uh, the kingdom of God, which is the church of Jesus Christ. And so all these things are related and connected, and we have to serve under His law. Uh, here I go. <laughs> I mean, where do laws come from? Laws come is. from governments. There it is. Power. And we have to, we submit to his law. There's another scripture that talks about being strengthened in him. And the word strengthened there, it, it, I just heard the Greek pastor explain it to his congregation the other night. It, it really means as you obey the laws of God, the stronger you get. Whoa. And I, I, I think that was a very significant kind of, set my feels on fire when I heard that. Yes, sir. So uh, I, uh, I hope we've been a blessing to you there in Colorado. Looking forward to being with y'all around New Year's time. That's right. And uh, God willing and the creeks don't rise. <laughs> Amen. We'll be there to see you. Thank we you, Brother Hayden, for this opportunity to address your sweet congregation. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. May the Lord bless the rest of this day. Brother Carter, take your liberty. Preach, teach, run the aisle, shout, play that guitar with all your might for all it's worth. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. It's a revival time at CAC. We love each and every one of you. Thank you for remaining faithful, keeping yourselves in the love of God. We'll look forward to seeing you next Sunday. God bless.